Hello and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the editor with My Security Media and publishers of Australia in Space magazine. We're joined by Air Vice Marshal retired Kath Roberts, uh, AOCSC. Uh, Kath, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Chris. Absolutely. Great. And look, it is great to speak to you. It's our first time, but I've seen you around, around and about. I think Avalon was probably the last time uh, I walked past you at least. Avalon was fantastic. And uh, and I think um, there were more photos taken of the buggy that I was in that had Space Commander on the front than, than photos of some of the aircraft. Funny you mentioned it. Exactly where you, you definitely drove past me uh, there. Um, look, it, and you're now out of the Air Force. Uh, we mentioned retired, uh, but you, you're hardly retired. Your name's popping up more and more uh, I've seen seeing it more and more now that you've actually have retired and you're taking on advisory board positions uh, with a number of organisations. The main one uh, that uh, brought us to you to us today is Defence South Australia, but also the Andy Thomas Space Foundation, and then you've got some others. And I think um, there's sort of two questions. One is how now do you see your role now that you've you're into the private sector and and left defence. But then I think also from the audience perspective, we'll touch on your background. You, you set up uh, Australia's Defence uh, First Space Command. Uh, so I think you're always going to be remembered for that uh, in terms of that as well. Maybe we will start with where do you see your new role? You're in a career transition uh, and what type of impact do you anticipate to make now into the private sector? You're coming out with something to say? Yeah, look, I think... Um... I'm really, really interested in Australia's security and prosperity. That's that's what I've been doing uh, in defence. But I see great opportunities for Australian industry. Um, and, and that's really where I want to focus, you know, what the opportunities are for Australia, our industry, particularly our space industry. I have a, a great um, interest in, in advancing that. And I think that uh, these advisory boards, um, you know, being able to promote uh, South Australia is, is great. Uh, and being able to work um, with universities to develop technology quickly. You know, Australia's got some great stuff out there. Um, and, and I just want to be someone who can link it up and, and make it work for Australia, make it work for defence. Um, and, uh, and also, you know, just basically uh, increasing um, STEM participation in the world, <laughs> um, but mainly in Australia. And, I, and I, I'm a great advocate for STEM. And I think that that's that's one of the things that I can really do is build up that workforce and people who want to be part of, you know, really exciting technical industries uh, into the future for Australia. Well, I think obviously, obviously that uh, links into your role with Andy Thomas uh, Space, Space Foundation as well. Do you see any specific shortfalls or gaps? I think STEM, as you say, you, it sounds like you're initially thinking of workforce development into the longer term and how sort of the, the advancements being made in space. We need to be thinking sort of 10, 20 years down the track and educating our kids in that regards right now. Yeah, look, I, I really think we do. And we need to inspire our kids um, and, uh, and, you know, more diversity uh, into um, the space sector in particular. And, and I can tell you right now, I really want an Australian astronaut program because that is um, the thing that encourages kids the most uh, even though not everyone would be an astronaut, of course, but that thought of being one just encourages them into space. And, of course, we've got Catherine Venel pegg now who's uh, just finished her training, so um, someone we can send. So at least we've got one, uh, one current one. Um, yes. What were some of the learnings that you'll take out of, I think, uh, capability development, uh, obviously through the development of Space Command? Maybe just talk us through sort of your outcomes and, and learnings out of that. You, there was a sort of a two-year role uh, and you've you've handed over the baton sort of at the start of this year. Um, mm. Yeah, what were some of the, the sort of learning outcomes that you had from that? Well, I think what I really learned was that Australian industry has got some really cool stuff it's developing, and um, you know where we could, from a defence perspective, we would uh, we would look at it. But I I got to see what all the universities were doing around Australia. I got to see. Um, you know, a, a great number of companies in South Australia um, who've got some fantastic technology. And and the thing about space um, is that it's dual use. So um, so you might be thinking of it for a commercial purpose, but it will have a defence um, application as well too. So sort of there's, there's some great opportunities out there. And I, I see um, I see Fleet, of course, Mariota in South Australia, Innovore have got their satellite going up. There's a 
There's a rocket going up from uh, from Canuba. Um, sorry, there's a rocket today. going up um, with su- t- today with sub- or tomorrow with sudden launch. You know, it's a candle, so <laughs> that's going to be uh, really interesting. So I really got to see so much about um, what Australia can contribute um, to the space industry, and that was really exciting. And I, you know, I learned only got to learn about that because we were just focused on space. Yeah. What any any sort of thoughts on the disparate or a potential disparate nature of Australia and the in the industry and how it's sort of separated around the states? Do you find a little bit more cohesion or strategic approach is needed? Uh yeah, just across the country, there's there seems to be uh different pockets of space activity. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of pockets of space activity and there's there's hundreds and hundreds of startups. Um, you know, I could have spent every day in my head last job just speaking to companies that were trying to get into the space sector. I, I, th- I don't think it's, uh, it, I think every state has got its advantages in terms of what it's doing in space. And, and it's just about getting that commercial um, business you know case i'll call it yeah. uh so th- there's money around there's uh, a lot of innovation funds i think that people can tap into but you need to understand how you can sell it to the rest of the world and and some companies have been very successful uh, skycraft's got a, a great um customer in its air traffic management system um fleet in terms of mining uh, and i think um many of the others uh, space machines i think just got uh, another 18 million um so not 18 million, part of the 18 million too uh, with, in that uh, program with India as well too. Other, other countries will invest in us if we've got a great market and a great product. And it's just about getting to that higher TRL level um, so that we can sell it. I don't, I won't, we won't dive into sort of the government policy and what you'd maybe like to see <laughs> there. But one comment, given your, given your um, sort of insights into defence, the general militarisation of space, uh, China's just uh, sort of adapted there. That's an aerospace force now, uh, and what we're seeing out of the US and, and internationally. Uh, your thoughts there? Any concerns, or were your eyes open a little bit when you we, when Australia started its own space command, and the general milar- militarization of space? Anything we should be aware of or alive to? I think it's um, really uh, the main thing is a congestion that we need to be concerned about, and um, and I think. You know, the Australia's geography is a great advantage there, and we learned a lot about that um, in uh, in Space Command um, because we can see what's going on when other parts of the world can't. Um, so our role in in understanding what's happening in space is really important, uh, and the space situational awareness um, capabilities that are being developed in Australia and and others that the military are going to contribute to uh, in Australia, I think are, are really important for us to understand what's going on. You, you can't uh, defend anything without understanding what, what's going on. And, and equally, um, if you want to launch things into space and have space capabilities that help us with all sorts of things, including you know, even climate change, we need to know what's there and, um, and make sure that we don't have collisions and, and uh, we understand um, you know that we're safely operating. So there's there's some um, there's a lot of work to be done, I think, um, in uh, in making sure that we keep space sustainable. Um, and you know you've got uh, companies like Space Machines that's part of their role in terms of uh, debris removal. So that's probably the biggest thing that I learned. There's a lot of stuff up there, and there's a lot more going up there. And, uh, and there's a lot of challenges as you move uh, further away from Earth to the Moon and 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 beyond. Um, and we need to be thinking long term about what we're going to be doing. Well, I think that comes to your board positions. Uh, I don't know if you've sat a, had, had any board meetings so far, but I'm just wondering: is, is it about connections and and sort of the the frameworks that space is operating in, and some of these companies will be operating in? Where do you find your main strengths as a board advisor? Will be uh, is it the connections? Uh, is it where? the plans are and and where you the roadmaps are in terms of where you will see things going uh or is it just general advice uh given your experience i'm just wondering ed where do you see your your key strengths well i, I mean my key strengths i think are in space um space capabilities space industry but also i mean obviously aerospace as well too i have had a bit of an aviation career as well 
Um, and, and the advisory boards are about, you know, for South Australia, it's about building South Australia's, um, you know, industry, defence industry, um, and uh, and building their defence and space sectors. And and I, you know, my role is is advising on everything from uh, interfacing with, um, you know, government and defence um, to being able to promote their industries, um, you know, to basically grow their industries and, and build the state. And so that's Defence SA. Um, and I bring that that knowledge of industry from the big primes down to the small SMEs across, across Australia and the university sector. So I think I can really help with that. Also, just their strategy going forward, you know, what it, making sure that they build with an industry, particularly their space industry, that, that is sustainable um, for and, and benefits the state. Um, Andy Thomas Space Foundation is all about encouraging kids into STEM, and um, and that's uh, and that's something that I'm really uh, keen on. I'm involved with the, um, a lot of companies that um, will sponsor um, that activity uh, in a not-for-profit organisation. So I bring a lot of, um, of a lot of contacts, I suppose, um, you know, for the Andy Thomas Space Foundation, and then then other roles. Um, it's again um, understanding the global environment as well too. So the strategic environment, the circumstances in which we face. So, you know, and linking that to what are some of the key things that we need to develop um, to be a, a nation that's resilient and uh, and secure. Look, I think it's a great uh, contribution now to the sort of the, the private sector space industry to have that defence link. The director, as you just retired. Uh, coming on to to these boards, I think it's a really good. It's first time sort of I've I've been seeing it directly from Space Command because you're the first one to retire. So uh, <laughs> I think it's a really good uh, good thing to be seeing. Um, one final question: What's a call to action? What would you sort of like the audience to sort of take away or or keep their sort of mind open to uh, either for the rest of this year or or the immediate future? Uh, either the impact you anticipate or uh, what you'd like to sort of see? Any any call to action that you'd like to raise? Look, I just I would say to the space industry in Australia, look, keep going. There are great opportunities out there. Um, there's going to be a great showcase uh, in South Australia in July at the at the conference. Um, you know, two days of, of where people can exhibit their capabilities. And, and I know a lot of them have just come back from Colorado Springs, um, yeah. making great contacts there. There's a market in Australia, there's a market around the world, and, um, and it's something that will really benefit Australia and all Australians. So um, keep, keep going and, uh, and keep that innovation up and running so that we can, um, we can be leaders in the space industry. Wonderful. Well, that's the Australian Space Forum in July there in Adelaide. I take it you'll be there, Kath. Yes, uh, yes I will. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, well, look, on, on that note, we'll, we'll cut it short. We'll don't, no doubt have you on again, I hope. Uh, but obviously, uh, you're one to watch now uh, from the private security, uh, I beg your pardon, from the private <laughs> sector, but also in the national security uh, area as well, no doubt. Yep. Uh, but Kath Roberts, thank you so much for joining us today on Australia in Space TV uh, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Chris.